South Carolina Republican Trey Gowdy became an internet sensation by tearing apart his opponents live on camera. Do you not see the outrage in that, Mr. Robertson? Do you see it? Gowdy was elected to Congress in 2010 as part of the Tea Party wave, quickly earning a reputation as a fierce and ruthlessly effective partisan. His tenure as chairman of the House Select Committee on Benghazi and his cross-examination of Hillary Clinton transformed him into a conservative folk hero. This is an investigation, which is why it's so sad that nowhere in that stack that you just put up there were the emails of Secretary Clinton, the emails But Gowdy, of a former prosecutor, has increasingly disappointed Trump partisans. When you are innocent, if the allegation is collusion with the Russians and there is no evidence of that and you're innocent of that, act like it. In January, Gowdy made a surprising announcement. He wouldn't seek re-election in November. The notorious partisan said there was too much partisanship. Would you guys welcome Senator Tim Scott and Representative Trey Gowdy? He's now on a book tour with his co-author, Senator Tim Scott, preaching solutions for Washington. Conciliation is uh, more Christ-like, and I think it's, it's better for the long-term health of our culture. That's but Gowdy himself can't wait to leave for good. Michael Moynihan spoke to him about his regrets. He's got a few. Do you regret these eight years? Do I regret running? I wouldn't no, do you regret serving? The only thing that gives me pause is there are a lot of people I have met that I would not have met um, but for. So it's hard to say I wouldn't go through the negative parts to experience the positive. What were the negative parts? Ineffectiveness. You're one of 435. You have to say it in 30 seconds. You don't get an hour in front of a jury, you get 30 seconds, or a tweet, or a bumper sticker. The end justifies the means. you, you got to win. Um, and we've convinced ourselves that we have to win because the country will go to Hades in a handbasket if my team doesn't win. Was that something that you realized the second you got into Congress? I think initially I wasn't terribly happy because I was away from home. What you miss, you, you can't ever get back. You live in an airport, you show up for a hearing, where you can debate it all day and not a single mind has changed. Not you didn't either. like this job, did you? <laughs> I mean, that, sound, that sounds self-serving, but I, li I like the people. But the job, I understand the people. No, I don't like the job. You no. don't like the job? No, I'm an executive branch guy. I'm not a legislative branch guy. Eight years you did it, though. Seven, soon to be eight, if I make it. If I don't get really recalled. Counting, if I don't get recalled. You're like one of these guys ticking the boxes on the I jail can tell cell wall. You, I can tell you right now, I have 19 more drives to the airport before this session is over. 19 more weeks for the rest of the year that I'm going to be gone three or four days away from home, and then after that I'll be in South Carolina. You're uh, counting the number of drives to the airport. That doesn't sound like a happy existence. Or it could be that you're just so excited to go do something else. Yeah. But to the extent men judge themselves based on what they do for a living, I don't have a lot to show for the last seven years. If I open my phone here and I go to YouTube, I get video after video, Trey Gowdy destroys X. Trey Gowdy eviscerates Y. Millions of views. You became rather famous in doing this, right? Well, I don't write the headlines and, but, and but I... The, but people love it. I mean, is that effective in some way? I think it's effective at raising issues. I don't think it's effective at resolving them. Um, Did you I, not like being that character? It's not who I am. If I were to ask somebody who knows about politics, Trey Gowdy, I suspect hyperpartisan would be one of the first five uh, adjectives used. Democrat, for sure, for sure. Um, part of that are the assignments that I've been given. Boehner put me on the ethics committee. Uh, he put me on the Benghazi committee. Paul, I think, watched that, and, and Paul knows me pretty well. He says, I, that's not who the guy is. That's not where he's happiest. We'll put you on House Intel, which is the most highly coveted committee in Congress. It is apolitical. It is bipartisan. It never makes the news. And then Russia happened. And the House Intelligence Committee was more divisive than the Oversight Committee has ever been. You became a sort of conservative folk hero with Benghazi. And now with the Russia investigation, Mark Levin, very popular conservative radio host, yesterday said, Trey Gowdy, how did this guy get through law school? Is this guy dumb or what? And uh, he's showing his true colors now because he's not running for re-election. 
that's pretty harsh stuff from the right now. Yeah. Have you heard a lot of that recently? I've heard some of it. Part of what I don't like about the modern political culture is um, 99 is a failing grade. It doesn't matter whether I liked you yesterday. The first time you do something or take a position that I don't agree with, um, you're going to go from me liking you to being a sellout and a rhino and a squish and never should have liked me in the first place. Why are you a rhino and a squish by, by these people's uh, standards? Probably because I defend Mueller. Because I have not figured out how to uh, commercialize conservatism as some of my critics have. The president of the United States, the leader of the Republican Party, called you a loser. Depending on how you judge the purpose of the Benghazi investigation, I think a lot of people would say I was a loser. But then you endorsed him. You endorsed the man who called you a loser. Yeah, he's the nominee, yeah. But you're, you, you were just saying, we're doing this in a party political way. I also knew a lot about the other candidate, too. So that was, that was an <laughs> also, issue. I also knew a lot about, well, what about her, too. What about just endorsing nobody? Um, do you think I he's fit for possible. office? Did you think he was fit for office at the time? Yeah. What do you make of the Republican Party in 2018? The goal is to win. That's all that the Republican Party cares about? That's the goal. Goal is to win. Are you a different person in 2018 than you were in 2010? It's hard to be more cynical than I was. Um, I'm a better person. I can check off the box of having tried that, and um, you won't see me running for political office again. So, You're done. I'm done.